Hello everyone from the Jesuit Institute. We are soon going to enter into one of the most central celebrations, if not the central celebration of our Christian calendar, Holy Week. And so we wanted to let you know what we will be offering during that time. On Palm Sunday, Mass will be broadcast at 9 a.m. And we invite you to have ready, wherever you are, palms. We will bless those palms together as a sign of entering into the sacred week. On Good Friday, a service will be broadcast at 3 p.m. And on Easter Sunday, Mass will be at 9 a.m. as usual. We'd also like to take this opportunity from all of us at the Jesuit Institute to wish you a very holy and blessed sacred week and tridium. Please pray for us as we assure you always of our prayers. Friends, I want to begin by thanking you all for your support over the years as we have come to know so many of you through the broadcast of a weekly Mass. At the Jesuit Institute, we've been discerning the best way forward and have decided that from the second Sunday of Easter, we will no longer be broadcasting a Mass because Masses now are easily accessible to most people. However, we know that many of you still would like to see us offering you something. We've taken the decision that from that second Sunday of Easter, we will weekly offer a service of the Word. We know too that many of you have complimented the preaching of the various preachers who have offered the Mass over the last number of years. And so we do not want to leave you orphans. We will offer you weekly a reflection on the Word of God and a little service of the Word, which will continue to be broadcast at 9 a.m. We hope that you will continue to support us and to journey with us as we very much would like to support you and journey with you on your own pilgrimage of faith. Of course, if you'd like to contact us, feel free to email us at any time, admin at jesuitinstitute.org.za. Thank you, and may God bless you. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come before the Lord on this fifth Sunday of Lent, and we hear the Lord inviting us to come out of those things that enslave us or bind us. Let's turn to the Lord now, bring to him the weakness, the fragility, and the sinfulness of our lives. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. By your help, we ask you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you home into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves 
and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. With With the the Lord Lord, there there is is mercy, in in him him is plentiful redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleading. With the Lord there there is mercy, mercy. in him is plentiful plentiful redemption. redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. I long for you, O Lord, my soul longs for his word. My soul hopes in the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. More than watchmen for daybreak, let Israel hope for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. For with the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. If the Spirit of God really dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me shall never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, Lord. I'm using the shorter version. At that time, the sisters of Lazarus sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. And when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness is not unto death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by means of it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus has already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, And while Mary sat in the house, and Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. Jesus, therefore, was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages, and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The end is near. This is the last Sunday of Lent. And for a moment, Let's just recap the journey that we have made in these last weeks. That first Sunday of Lent, when we reflected upon the temptations of Jesus in the desert, our temptations and Lent as our desert. The transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain, like the disciples calling us to deeper faith and trust in God. The woman at the well inviting us to examine our own thirsts. And last week, that blind man, inviting us to look at what blinds us. And this Sunday, we hear the story of Lazarus, or in Hebrew, he is called Elazar, which means the one that God has helped. I want to suggest that this account invites us as we look at the journey that we have made ourselves through Lent to consider what Lent has taught us, especially about perhaps the tombs in our own lives, that which lies hidden and perhaps even has died. There are three invitations. The first one is simply that word truth. It strikes me that this account is full of honesty and truth. We hear the the pain and the grief of Mary and Martha. The pain of Jesus is not hidden. We are told that he's troubled in spirit and that Jesus weeps. Martha says plainly and bluntly to Jesus that she is disappointed that he did not come quicker. The process of decay has set into her brother and he would smell. There's so much honesty in this account. And I wonder if Lent has been a journey of grappling with the truth. Who speaks truth to me and where am I called to speak the truth? We live in a society and a dispensation that has in recent years been built on a corroding dishonesty, lies, distortion, dishonesty have sadly become our daily bread. And we can easily absorb what is in the culture around us into our own lives. How has Lent 
helped us to grapple with the truth. It's easy to allow the bad spirit to work. Maybe it's in our professional lives, in our lifestyle, or maybe in our behavior that we have been conned into believing it's okay to be dishonest. It's not so bad to fundamentally be turned away from the truth. I wonder in Lent what truth has been spoken to you, what conversion has been invited of you. Perhaps we need to sit with that as we examine our journey of Lent. And closely linked to that is our second reflection, that this man comes out of the tomb and he is bound. And Jesus says, unbind him. Lazarus has many material cloths around him. That's how they buried people in the ancient Near East. But I wonder what cloths are around us, things that keep us in the darkness of the tomb, which maybe even we generously guard and don't want others near. We displace so much energy trying to defend our tombs, and we might even lash out at people who suggest that we are bound. And so Lent asks us to confront what binds us, the things we don't see, the things we can't see, the things we won't see our pride or our greed, our materialism, our arrogance, our selfishness, our complacency. It's so easy to spot them in others and think they don't apply to me. They do, all of them, to all of us in one way or another. How has Lent revealed where you are bound? where you are stuck perhaps in a comfort zone. Where in your binding is God inviting you to conversion? And finally, the words that Jesus speaks to Lazarus come out. Lazarus is invited into new life, into resurrected life. Jesus stands at the entrance of the tombs in our own lives, and invites us out, as we are. Lazarus, we are told, smells perhaps. He's not taken and cleaned up first, but Jesus simply invites him out. You see, with God, we are never abandoned. Somehow, we're always being invited to face the truth and to be unbound and rise all at once. The journey of Lent is supposed to be a journey to freedom, to claim the new life that only God can offer. Where, after this journey of Lent, as we move now into Holy Week, is the Lord inviting you to come out into new life? What is the stone that Jesus stands before in your own life, saying to you, come out. How has this journey of Lent been for you? Where are you on the journey this last Sunday of Lent? What has God done for you as you've walked the past weeks of the Lenten season? Let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord invites us to new life. Let us present our needs to him as we try to welcome that new life into our lives. For peace in our world, that all will turn from hatred to love and from violence to reconciliation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who will be initiated into the church this Easter, that the seeds of the gospel buried deep within them, called to come out by Jesus, may yield a rich harvest of prayer, faith, and service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that by reflecting on our Lenten journey, will come to the celebration of Easter with hearts and minds unbound and free to receive new life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have been bereaved or are suffering the loss of a loved one, that the Lord will heal their wounds and fill them with hope in the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick or housebound, that they may know the gentle touch of God's healing love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, you invite us to come out of whatever it is that binds us. Hear these our prayers and set us free so that we may serve you in sincerity of heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth, Work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brothers and sisters, Let's pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's church. Hear us, Almighty God, and have instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith. Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, 
just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise, as together we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. It is the Lord Jesus who sets us free. Let us now pray to him, asking for the freedom that we desire as we say the very words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what we at your prompting desire may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.